This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to recreate the Matrix screen and place yourself into it. Enter the Matrix. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, some mash that subscribe button and please remember to click like if you like this video. Open a close-up photo of yourself or someone else that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. We'll get back to it in a few minutes. Minimize Photoshop and open a simple text editor such as Notepad in Windows or Text Edit in Macs. Drag the photo inside the text editor. Because simple text editors aren't meant to accept images, they'll end up filling up with a wide variety of characters and symbols. Scroll to an area that has a good variety of characters and click to the left of the first character. If your text is approximately this size, scroll down just a bit and shift click to the right of the last character to highlight all the characters between your first and last clicks. Press Ctrl or Command C to copy the highlighted text. Minimize the text editor and maximize Photoshop. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. Pick a bright green. Notice your foreground color is now the color you just picked. Open the vertical type tool and go to File and New. Make its width 1920 pixels, its height 1080 pixels, and its resolution 72 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. If the background color box isn't black, click it and pick black. Then click Create or Open. Place your cursor to the top left corner and drag it to the bottom right corner. Press Ctrl or Command V to paste your text into the text box. We'll take care of the spacing in a minute. Open your type picker and pick a font. I'm using Chiller, which you can download from FontZone.com. I provided its link in my video's description. Make its size 20 points. Its aliasing is irrelevant in this case. Choose this icon, which makes our text flush at the top and ragged at the bottom. Go to Window and Character. Make the letting 20 points and the tracking 0. Letting controls the amount of space between lines of type, while tracking controls the amount of space between characters. Click the check mark at the top. Name the text layer Text. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Make the letting 10 and the tracking 10. Make a copy of this layer and make the letting 20 and the tracking 25. We can close the character panel now. Name the other text layers Text. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the active layer. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. This creates subtle variances of opacity in this layer. We'll repeat it for the top layer. Go back to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Notice the clouds effect in this layer mask has the same tonality, but the clouds image is different. We'll further give our text more tonal variances by brushing black over areas in the layer masks. To do this, open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. Make its size 400 pixels and its hardness 0%. Make its opacity approximately 50% and the flow 100%. Randomly brush over your image. Make the layer mask under it active and again randomly brush over this image. Next, we'll copy these three text layers by clicking the top layer to make it active and shift clicking the bottom text layer to make all the text active. Press Ctrl or Command J. We'll merge these copies into one layer by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Name it Motion Blur. 
drag it below the other text layers. Go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Make the angle 90 degrees and the distance 30 pixels. If you like your matrix image as it looks, we can flatten our entire image by clicking the icon at the upper right again and clicking Flatten Image. Open your subject. The first step is to separate it from its background. If you're using version CC2020, unlock it and open the Properties panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Properties. Scroll down the panel and click Remove Background. It automatically analyzed our image and did its best to create a layer mask of our subject shape. It does do a pretty good job overall, and for this project, the layer mask doesn't have to be perfect since it'll be blended in with our matrix text. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, open your Quick Selection tool and drag it over your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Then click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Press V to open your Move tool and drag the subject onto the tab of your matrix image. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and then release. To resize it, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top, Make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. Drag the scrubby slider to the left or right to reduce or enlarge your subject size. To reposition it, go inside the transform's bounding box and drag it. Then press Enter or Return. Next, we'll make our subject into a displacement map, which will make our text look as if it's wrapping itself around the contours of our subject. For it to work properly, our subject must be cropped to the same size of our matrix image. To do this, press Ctrl or Command A to select the dimensions of your visible document and go to Image and Crop. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Doing this allows us to modify our subject non destructively. Open back the Flyout list and this time click Duplicate Layer. Open the Destination Document list and click New. Name it Displacement. Notice it created a new document named Displacement. Displacement maps look best when they are black and white and slightly blurred, so we'll do that to ours. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Black and White. Make the subject active and go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur 3 pixels. Go to File, and Save As. Save it to your desktop, as a Photoshop PSD file, and click Save. If you see this message, just click OK. Now that we saved it, we can close the displacement document. Make the background active, and make a copy of it. Control or Command click the thumbnail of your subject to select its shape. Temporarily hide the subject and convert the copy of the background into a smart object. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales 20 each, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Click the displacement file you saved earlier and click Open. Notice our matrix text that was inside the selection is wrapping itself over the contours of our subject. Make your subject visible and active and change its blend mode to soft light. To strengthen the effect, make a copy of it. To make our subject a bit more discernible, make the background copy active and make a layer mask next to it. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Enter the Matrix. Thanks for watching.